Welcome to the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. I'm down at Frencham Trout Fishery. I'm going to be trying to catch some trout using what's called sight indicator, sight bob, or as one of the animal things they use up in the Midlands on the reservoirs, they call the bung, which God knows how big it is. I haven't even fished with that one yet. But the sight indicator I'm going to be using, oh, let me show you, little small foam indicators. And what they're going to do is suspend your fly, or normally a buzzer, a small fly, in let's say the heat of summer when things are tough at a pre you know a, a, a pre-required depth that either you want or the trout want inevitably it's what the trout want you have to fish where the trout are so i'm going to try and find a couple of fish in the main lake first to get an idea of what they're taking out watch the, the fish if i can because it's clear enough i've got polarizing glasses and it's just a little tip that i don't use them a lot maybe three times a year i suppose i use sight indicators they're quite interesting to use because but they're peculiar because you don't get a, you don't get to feel the take. You visually watch this little thing pop under the water, and that's all it is. You pop them out like this. You peel the back off, peel the foam back off, and then you fold that around your fly line. And as I mentioned earlier up there on the lake, I have put that about what I reckon is about two feet, maybe thirty inches deep. So that's stuck on there and that should sit on the surface i'm also going to be wearing a head cam and i don't know being wide angle whether you're actually going to see the take or not if we do get one um, i've had those trout early on up there good bit of fun now i'm going to see if i can get one because i know the trout are taking not right off the surface it's very warm taking i reckon about two feet down but they could be deeper a lot of time the bigger fish will go deeper and the fish i caught up there earlier you know up to about two pounds within that first two feet of depth. So I'm going to try it here first, give it a go, and let's see if we can catch something. By the way, the noise you hear in the back is not a gentleman or a cow or an elephant urinating. It is actually the outflow that sucks the water from the top of the lake. There's a big pipe, and it just sounds as though somebody's had too much to drink and is just can't zip up, I'm afraid. It's not me, though. It is that pipe. Actually, if I do get a trout, I hope it doesn't get sucked down that pipe and disappear off to another lake somewhere. I won't be able to net that one. Now what I've done, I've degreased this with just washing up liquid from here to there. Now I'm going to see, I might have to change lines, this is an intermediate, which means it could stay on the surface, it could sink slowly. I'm going to give it a, a try first, I might have to take, change to a generally would use a straight floating line. And I will grease this. I'm just going to have a few casts, I know the trout are in there, I've seen them swimming, but will they take in this hot weather? We don't know. Let's give it a go. Now what you are at the mercy of is wind drift and there's a bit of wind come up one assumes because it's sort of very very hot this creates a bit of thermal so you're going to have to allow for that to belly round and just go around in a slow tweak. I mean I can see fish cruising around there they're all swimming straight past it with disdain so what I'm going to do is cast well out and just let the fly sink down to that predetermined depth which I reckon is about 30 inches but I might have to come up or down and there are in fact quite a few mayfly coming off as well. Maybe, maybe oh, I should take this one off and put what I said nights. No, Mayfly nymphs off. But this is what the side indicator looks like when it's on the water. I feel it doesn't hurt just to give it a little tweak now and then and that might just attract the attention of those bigger fish, make them turn their head and then let it sit. Just leave it and you're waiting for the sight indicator to go down. When it goes down, pull your left hand and lift with your right hand. Don't forget, you're not retrieving like this in a constant contact with a fly. So there's every chance he could take it and spit it out. My God, there's a couple of lunker trout swimming around out here. Oh, oh, oh my god, there's a big fish there. Very difficult to let it sit, very difficult. He's right over there by the pipe, by the outflow pipe. Oh my god, he's something to hook a big trout on this side, Bob. Oh, oh, oh. Now, 
I took the click off and went in stealth mode because the other lake was full of anglers. Oh, Jesus, I think I, think I just got a tape. I did, yeah, I just got a tape by a wild brownie. I just, I actually felt it. I didn't even see it. I was looking at the camera. Would you, Adam and Eve, it? That was a wild brownie in the lake. <laughs> well, it's nice to know that flight. Oh, Jesus, he took it again. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, I know what's happened. What I didn't do, folks, was I didn't squeeze it on tight enough. I just did it for the camera. So I think what I'm going to do is maybe I'll try and really squeeze the water out of it, get it nice and tight. Because as I lifted, it slid down onto the fly. Let's try again. I've seen one very big fish here. And I've seen a wild brownie. I've left the ratchet on this time because I was in stealth mode up at the other lake because there were a lot of anglers there and I wanted to move around. I want to keep it nice and quiet. There we go. I can see one coming towards me. Just let it sit like that. Here he comes. I've got to watch the float go. A lot of times, years ago, they used to say it was like, it was frowned and it was thought of being cheating. And, you, I don't, you know, I use it two or three times a year, mostly suspended buzz of fishing in deep water um, when they are down deep. Because, look, what happens is, if you're retrieving buzzers on a floating line, as soon as you retrieve, they're going to come up in an arc. It doesn't matter how slow you retrieve them. If you want them to sit down, don't forget, a buzzer doesn't go zooming up horizontally, does it? A buzzer goes from the mud at the bottom to the surface. It, it works in a vertical plane up and down like this. So that's really why suspending that fly, or you know, your nymph, vertically does actually work. It's a deadly technique, not necessarily in my hands, but it is a deadly technique, and it's another one that you should you know, use in your armory. Every now and then, you should be trying something different, is what I'm trying to say. See if we can move it on the surface as well. Give it one a longer one. Right, guys, I'm going to put a head cam on and see if I can, uh, I can get some action for you if we do get a hookup. One of the benefits of fishing on your own is you get quite a bit of peace and quiet. But the other downside is you don't have a camera on. You have to do it all yourself with one of these and one of those. Let's see if we get lucky. As soon as I hook up, press a button, we might get something. actually got one hooked up there. This one is no two pounder. Well, that just goes to show you that uh, getting those smaller fish from the larger lakes actually gave me that rough idea of about 30 inches and the fact I squeeze that really hard on there. I think I can still move it, but you've got to possibly every once in a while just give it a squeeze there to make it nice and tight on the line. Now, they don't cast well into the wind because obviously that's going to kill your cast into the wind. I was lucky to get away with these with an intermediate line, a floating line would be better. I may change, I may not see how it goes. I think it's worth another shot because I've seen some other big fish moving around here. And very often in clear water, although you can see them and strike them visually by seeing the mouth close on the fly, sometimes the fly's just a little bit too deep and when it goes around late in the afternoon and the evening, you lose your, your light, you lose your vision, you lose your clarity and you can't quite see. And a lot of time, they'll just take it and blow it out. Boom, it's gone in a flash. You might feel a tweak, you might not. But by using a sight bulb, 
you will see it even if you can't see the fish. I'm gonna keep working at it. I'm gonna degrease this bit again. Just that from the, from the fly to there. So it's sitting like this, it's sitting on a vertical plane. Give it one tweak and that's all I did. As the fish got close, I gave it a tweak and then just, it must have moved the fly up and let the fly settle naturally. And it's working up and down that sort of little vertical plane, which is, don't forget what they should be doing in a natural state. I'm just using a bit of washing up liquid. That's all I'm using. I'm going to buy any fancy stuff. This does the same job. Right. Now there is a big one out there. Am I going to get lucky with it? On a suspended fly and a sight bob. Let's get it out there. Well, I'm coming right up close to it. Ooh. <laughs> oh, got it. He absolutely buried that sight bob. Absolutely buried it. Good fish too. Going for the bushes, going for the bushes. Turn him. Come on, come on. Okay, we're clear of the bushes, guys. Anyway, that's one thing. It's a five pound fish, I'm telling you. It's a nice fish. Check this one out. Check this one out. Hopefully you guys can see him. Clinging on for dear life. Wow, he's, big, he's bigger than the other one. He is... Oh. He's bigger than the other one. I can't hold this big hammer and play this fish. There you go folks, guess he's about eight pounds, let's get it straight back. Uh, well, what a result. But when I went to unhook that trout, he was on, wait for this, two flies, somebody else had lost him as well. I certainly took two flies out of him. One will be mine, and the other one got tangled up in the net and came out, so somebody else had lost a good fish there. Maybe, you know, did they just release it or did they lose it? No, they would have lost it because they took the hook out, wouldn't they? Silly me. So they've lost that. But they might not have lost it if they've used one of these sight bombs. There's one fly. Now that's my fly, but looky here, folks. If I can get it out. This is what he lost it on. There's, I've done that trout a favour because he's still gone back and I got the other fly out of his jaw as well. Just like a little shellback buzzer or something like that. I don't know what strength leader that guy was using. Ah, yeah, right. About three pounds. That's not going to do it in these fisheries where fish can run close to double figures. Well, I think I've proved the sight bulb works. Give it a go. Shall I have one more cast? What do you think, guys? What do you think? Should I? I want to go back to that, that main lake because you never know what's up. There could be some nice brownies up there. I think one or two more casts here. Don't throw that away, put it in your pocket, throw it away at home. There's enough litter out there without anglers leaving even more. Well, just as I said, people, the light has indeed changed. The sun's gone around at a different angle. Uh, up here, it goes from light to dark, so I'll be casting into a flat, dark area where I won't actually be able to see any fish cruising around. So, Let's give it a go. One last cast of this, eh? Unless I see anything close by, 
that I can set up that you might get actually to see that sight bob go down. Yeah, there's a bit up here by an overhanging bush. It looks good to me. Let's hope it looks good to the trout. I probably missed the take looking around like this, but just allow 10, 15 seconds for that fly to sink, depending on how much weight is in the underdressing of the fly. And then what you can do if you want it to cover a bit of area is just slowly figure eight it. You don't want to be popping that sight bob on the surface because that might create ripples and put the trout off. Remember, it's only 30 inches from the actual fly. Give it another go. Oh, that's nearly up that tree. Yeah, I've got to throw it through a gap at the back. And you should just be able to see the sight bob stands out bright yellow in that shadow line that's over there that the trees are showing, throwing down, you know, where the suns go around lower. I see a shape moving there. Oh, right by it, the sign. Right. Not often you get a take on camera like that. It absolutely buried that sight bob. It's another good fish there. And you can see the sight bob hasn't slid up the line at all. Nice fish. Nice fish, terrible net. Come on. Oh. Stop it, stop it, stop it. No way. Right way. Check that one out, mate. Look at the size of that. <laughs> 